so I'm gonna go over some Lottie stuff here. Uh, Lottie's awesome, and um, it's it's such a powerful way to build animations. Um, small file size, uh, using existing tools, so you don't have to learn some new tool if if if, if as long as you know After Effects, uh, and it's awesome. But a couple problems with it, and probably the biggest problem with it is that Lottie introduces into your site actual live source code. So every one of these items is real code that's the browser and everything processes, um, right? So, so developers don't like it all of the time because it's now putting production code onto the designers. So this video is going to kind of go over how a designer can make a very efficient Lottie animation, and um, especially in with regards to like uh, Google, you know, page speed and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to bring you this world, real world example here. Uh, this is an animation uh, uh, a an agency sent us. Um, here's the file, and um, you know this. 10 minute 10, 10 second animation here's all the layers uh, and it's just kind of a simulating UI kind of thing um, and we put it on the site it is 266k so again compared to a video that's great but um, uh, and, and so that that's awesome right um, but the problem with it is we ran the lighthouse uh, test on our site and performance was not ideal um, went down here uh, and one of the big things here is the avoid an excessive DOM size so on our site it was 2066 um, just over 2000 elements um, DOM elements and again what that means is on the site there are one two three four each one of these counts as an item so uh, so I wanted to get it down and and uh, also thought the file size was kind of kind of larger than it should be so um, so I said about optimizing it and I want to I want to oh and then this in here so if I go to console now something it's hard to I couldn't find a tool that shows you how many DOM elements are in here so what I did is made a demo HTML file and then just ran document query selector all for every node on the page now this includes the Lottie library and stuff so it's not totally accurate but it does give us a baseline of this file in this setup gives us 1486. Now Google says 1500 uh, DOM elements or more will give uh, the red flag. In fact, I was optimizing this and I got two, 1500 on the nose and I saw the red flag and then dropped it just below and it, it, turned, it changed. So, um, so yeah, so anything below 1500, 1499 or below will um, alleviate this error. Uh, but you can see right here, this is just for this animation. We're at 1486. And again, a reminder back here, there's 2,000 on the whole site. And so 1486 minus, or, or 2,066 minus 14. So there's 580 total items on the page. And then this Lottie animation, which has almost 1,500. Okay, so yeah, how to fix this. There are three main things. Um, that I that I know about, um, and I'm just kind of this is all self uh, discovery stuff here. Uh, but there's basically three things: there's instances, uh, reusing clips, there's uh, layers, um, and flattening layers, um, and then um, a, a, as well as grouping, and then scaling, where you add on the parameters. So I'm going to go over some of those here. Um, so yeah, so first one is instances. So you know, here's this whole animation. They're all these different things, um, these different little elements on here, all exported from Figma and um, using the AE, AEUX plugin. Um, if you don't know about that, it's awesome. Google makes it. It helps you get from uh, Figma into After Effects. You need to install the plugin for After Effects and then install another version of the plugin for Figma. Basically, there's a Figma plugin and an After Effects plugin. You have to plug them in, install them both so they can talk to each other. But then it's essentially just a one click and brings the, your comps into After Effects. Again, different video if, if <clears throat> you want it. But um, so this, I'm gonna take this element here, which is identical to here, right? These are the same, but notice if I come in here, 
This is a clip called frame six, and this is a clip called frame seven. Again, those are just uh, auto names. Um, so frame seven is here. Um, where did that go? Frame six is here. So they're pretty identical. So what we're gonna do is come into here and we're gonna call this one, um, let's just use this one and we'll, we'll replace this guy here. So we'll get rid of this. Um, delete, deleted, delete, delete, okay. So we'll get rid of that one um, and we'll just work on frame six. So, so here's the file. This is again, just kind of a typical file you gotta get from Figma. So first thing you can do is delete these um, guide layers. Um, usually there's, if it's in a frame, it'll have these extra layers in there. You can start turning them on and off, um, actually. And then I'll turn on this. Okay, so it's transparent here. So there is no background color. Um, but then we start going through and we find all of the same items. One, two, three, four, five. Um, oh, there's a black. Oh, okay, there's a black, so I'll call this one. Um, you don't have to do this name thing, but this is just so we know for this thing. And then pick. Um, actually, and the pick is the same. It Basically, you group things into uh, color, right? These are just vector paths, but they get filled by the same, with the same color property. Uh, and if there were other, you know, if I'm in here, um, uh, the, these two would be the same color property. All the black ones could be the same, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and I'll do, I'll call this one optimized, by the way. Um, okay, so let's go through here. I'm gonna hide the black one, I'll shy that, and then actually the rest, we're all just gonna merge all this. So there's how many layers? There's seven layers. Um, and let's, so let's start working on these. I'm gonna call this one um, it. And we'll make it red, just, just for, just so we can see the difference. Okay, so a couple things. So first off, we're working in instances, but there's things we're optimizing within instances, we're optimizing layers, groups, and, and scaling. So first thing I'm going to do is go to path. Okay, I'm gonna type in path, all of our paths show up. You'll notice they're all rectangles with rounded properties on them, right? Um, they're all, a, a rectangle is a primitive shape that both um, shape layers in After Effects understand and SVG uh, engines understand that as well. I don't like them, I'm gonna remove it. So I just right click it. I change everything to Bezier paths. I just like that actually. I don't even know how that affects processing. Um, likely uh, is not a good thing, but I just like doing that um, because then everything can just be, I don't have to mess, I can, I can, I don't know, I just feel like I have better control with that and more consistency. Okay, so here we are. This is this one. I'm going to now copy each path. So I'm gonna go down to the first one below here, copy this. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to paste. Now paste it right on top of that and look where I'm going. I'm going to that end one there, right? So I go back up here. Now you have to click on the path. If you, if you paste it in, this is selected, but if you click off and click back on, let me do that again real quick so you can see. If I copy and paste, notice I can move that. See, I can move it around. But if I copy and paste and then click off and then click back, it moves the whole thing, which we don't want. So um, again, copy, paste. Now you can move it. Um, and if you zoom in, you can get more accurate, but I'm not going to. So I'm gonna delete this layer, copy, paste. So it's super tedious, but if you don't have the Figma file, which I do not, um, this is not too bad actually. Copy paste, bring it over here, drop down here, right? I'm just gonna, not gonna get super accurate, but um, obviously if this was production, you'd do, um, okay, delete, and almost done. Delete, or I mean paste, and then delete. Okay, so now what do we have in here? Let's look, at, let's look again. We have our contents and our transform. So. We have our fill here. We're gonna bring that down to the bottom now. So there's all of our objects. Uh, now, one thing is uh, scaling. So, and, and scaling is just one of the things, but if I do um, scale, so notice we have a scale here that's set to 100%, and this is for the entire layer. But inside this 
shape here inside the contents, there's another scale. So what and what I believe is happening is this is uh, gets added to each one of these elements. Um, so what I like to do is scale the entire layer. I found this helps, and I'm not 100% sure what's happening here, but what I like to do is I, I just switch this out, right? If, so if anything's scaled inside your frame in Figma, it's gonna be scaled here, and then your frame will always be 100%. So what I do is we want 300% scale in this artwork, but we just wanna switch these. So I'm gonna turn this back to 100, now too small as you can see, but change this to 300, and because it's centered on this anchor point from this original square, we're, we're good. Okay, so that's a big one. So, um, so here's everything, right? Transform inside here is set to 100, and now all these transform, all these properties are default. They're, I, I don't think they even get added, frankly, because nothing's changed. Um, and this, so this is the only one that's changed. Now, because these are in a group, I can do Shift Command G, and I can bring them all to the top level. Okay. So that's it. That's that's just one. And, and if I had different colors, like if I was in, um, you know, if I was here, uh, going around like this, you know, each one of these items, you know, I I, I did this already yesterday. So it'd be one group here, one of this dark group, a group here, and you could just kind of group them by color. This would be one big group, one, two. So this should be four layers basically for this movie clip. Um, but it's it's uh, for this component or uh, composition. But it's, you know, it's way more than that. So, um, okay. So optimize is good. Delete. I can delete. So we're here. So okay. Um, I'm gonna be in here, and now this one is called delete, and this one is called optimize. So I'm gonna delete that one. I'm gonna duplicate that. Command D, bring it down, and now we have two of the same clips, right? We could obviously do the same thing here. I will not. But actually, well, let's just do it real quick. Um, I'm going to just delete frame three and we'll duplicate that down here with no optimization. And that's still going to be better. Okay. Let's just say that's good. All right. So I am now going to test this. So we didn't do a ton, but we flattened the layers down. And so there was no like container. And then we, um, um, we flattened the layers to, into one single layer. Then we, in the groups, we flattened them all. So they weren't in subfolders and subgroups. And then we did the scaling issue. Went from 266 to 248, right? So not a huge change, but that's 18K. Um, not bad. Uh, wait, is that right? 66, or is it 18K? Um, but we created this data to demo. So what I'm gonna do is open this up, I'm gonna come back here, and I'm gonna drag this in here. So file size is negligible, or it's you know, 20K, but um, what we're gonna do here is look at these numbers. So went from 1486 to 1446. So that's 40 fewer DOM elements. Um, doesn't sound like much, but we didn't really do much, right? We flattened that one file, duplicated it, and then, and that's pretty much it. We did 40. Um, and you can see how many different elements are on here. Um, it, it, it's, it's quite a big savings. And so, in fact, let me show you this. So this is what I, yesterday um so this is the original file 266 got it down to 156 and um but more importantly is we got the dom elements down to uh um to an acceptable level so basically we got rid of this um, excessive dom size warning and went from uh uh you know, 2066 down to just under 1500 to 1450 or whatever, um, all just through this one single um, Lottie animation. So that's the flow. It's kind of a lot of steps, but it totally affects this. This went to a, um, uh, a, a warning instead of a red flag and our performance went into the green. So we're actually pretty stoked on it. Um, at least so far, there's some other issues we got to deal with, but overall um, it was a successful process. Uh, yeah, and so uh, that's, again, it's tedious, but that's the flow I use and it seems to work and um, definitely will alleviate tension between the design team and the dev team uh, and uh, help increase page score. Thanks.